When I'm riding my Segway down the street, people will often stop and ask me, hey, homebrew challenge guy, what's your favorite beer style? And I'll tell them why it's Belgian triple, of course. Okay, people are not actually stopping me on the street to ask me anything, but my favorite beer style is Belgian triple, and we're gonna brew one today. Let's go. My name's Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And not only is Belgian Triple one of my favorite styles to drink, but it's also one of the styles that I have brewed most frequently. Sometimes with fantastic results, and other times not so much, like the bottle bombs incident. And then there was that time I bottle conditioned my triple for two years. Oh, it smells like vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gone bad. <laughs> Such a build up. That was supposed to be the main event. It's disgusting. Oh, it's just vinegar. But hope springs eternal, and today's recipe is quite simple, but should still really capture the essence of a good Belgian triple. Now, Belgian Triple is a pale Abbey Ale. It's quite strong, usually around eight or nine percent, and it really has some spicy and fruity flavors to it. And you'll often actually see in some recipes that spices will be added into the beer, particularly coriander and sometimes even pepper. But for today's recipe, I'm not gonna add any spices. I'm gonna try to get those characteristics out of the hops and the yeast that I'm using. So I'm gonna build a beer here with an original gravity of 1075. That's gonna be around eight or 9% ABV. The base malt is Belgian Pilsner malt. That will make up 83% of my grist. And then I'm just adding one other grain to that, which is 3% of aromatic malt. The remaining 14% will come in the form of sugar. We want to add the sugar to raise the ABV and also dry out the beer a bit. And for that, I'm using clear candy sugar. I have preheated my strike water to 158 Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna be mashing at 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. And if you watched last week's video, you will have seen that I have got this jacket for my claw hammer system now, and I used it to do an overnight mash. Well, more on that in a moment, but let's get these grains in first of all. Now last week's overnight mash, it worked really well, and all I did was I just left this mash tun unattended overnight, and came back the next day and conversion had magically happened. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time, but I am gonna do an overnight mash again. Rather than just relying on this jacket to insulate everything, I'm going to use my temperature controller to keep everything at my mash temperature of 152 Fahrenheit. So I really wanna make sure this is stirred in because I'm not gonna be doing any recirculation. So I'm gonna leave my temperature controller set to 152 Fahrenheit, and that will just cycle the heating element on and off uh, as is necessary to maintain the temperature. And I think the fact that I'm using this jacket should mean that I'll have a, a more uniform temperature during my mash over this long period of time. But it's not time for me to leave just yet because there's something else I need to do today. Now it turns out that the yeast I'm intending to use for this beer, WLP 500 Monastery Ale, is a yeast that I already used with my Trappist single, which has finished fermenting here in this Spike Brewing CF5. Now I have cold crashed this fermenter, I have put it under five PSI of pressure, and what I'm gonna do is harvest some of the yeast that's right at the bottom here of this fermenter and reuse it in my Belgian triple. So I'm gonna add a quick release plate to the output valve here at the bottom. And then I've just got a bit of tubing that I actually 
I use with my claw hammer system and I'm gonna use that to grab the yeast and I have a sanitized mason jar within which to collect it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this port here and I'm just gonna let the first runnings of yeast just go to waste in this container here. Um, often like the deadest, spentest yeast is gonna be right at the bottom. So you wanna get rid of that and then collect what's left after that. So here is my collected yeast. Now, trap is single and Belgian triple, uh, not so different. And I could probably just pitch this directly into my word if it were ready. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cold crash this in my fridge overnight. And then that way I will be able to cant off any of the liquid that has risen to the top. And that will be my attempt to wash the yeast. It's been 14 hours of mashing and boy, this thing just stuck at 152 overnight, which is great. I've just hooked it up now to my pump and I'm recirculating and I'm performing a mash out at 168 Fahrenheit. This is the yeast which I've just taken out of the fridge. And you can see with a close look here that the sort of the heaviest yeast has come to the bottom. And then just at the top here, it gets a little bit lighter and lighter. And then really at the top, I think this is kind of more beer than it is yeast. So I'm just gonna decant the top layer of this and then leave this out at room temperature to warm up. Now, when this mash is done, which is just in a couple of minutes, then we're gonna move on to the boil. And for the boil, I am using two different hops. So I have both a Tetanang and a Sars hops here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tetanang in at the start of the boil and use this as my bittering hop. I'm looking for an IBU of around 23 with this beer. Um, now, as for the SARS, I'm going to split this and half of it is going to go in as the bittering hop as well at the start of the boil. And then the other half is going to be my flavor and aroma hop, which will go in with about five minutes to go and that will add just a little bit of that sars spiciness to the beer. Then I'll also at five minutes be adding in my clear candy sugar. The original gravity has come in at 1080, just a few points over. Um, I do find that the system is more efficient when it mashes overnight, so I need to account for that a bit, but I'm not too worried about an extra half point of alcohol with this thing. Now, I am going to be fermenting the yeast at 70 Fahrenheit, 21 Celsius, but rather than just pour it in right now into this feast of sugar, I am going to make a vitality starter. So what that involves is I've basically just stolen some of the wort as I was transferring into the fermenter. And I'm going to put the yeast in here and run it on my stir plate just for a few hours, just to get the yeast going again. And then after that, I will pitch everything that's in this flask into this beer. So I'm just gonna seal this up Keep this at 70 Fahrenheit and run this for a couple of hours. I've put down the bottle dozens of times and thrown my bag away. Then I'd start thinking you lost in my head and be drunk by the end of the day. I'd light up a joint, hit it real hard. How high I could get Sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind But I'm always trying to quit So it is finally time for the triple. Mm -hmm. This is the longest I've ever gone since I started home brewing without brewing a triple because I just had to wait for it to come up in the list. Right, well, first of all, it's in the right glass. A goblet. Okay. Uh, we didn't have any unbranded glasses, so we're using Chimay 
Chimmy, chimmy. Cheating a little bit. <laughs> uh, color. Okay, so it's very light, um, which is very different to the double one, but it's kind of like the single. Yeah, it is. It is very similar to the single. It smells like a bit like fruit, like bananas. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting um, fruity esters. Yeah, some fruity esters, sweetness. Okay, well, let's give it a try. Okay. Oh, it's very cold. <laughs> yes. It's very cold. The beer is cold. <laughs> oh my god, that's really good. So it tastes a bit sweeter than I could smell, but not really, really, really sweet. It just is so drinkable. This is what makes triple such a dangerous drink, I think, that it's it's light on the palate, it's pleasant, it's just like a touch of sweetness to it, a little bit of fruity mm -hmm. esters to it, and nearly 8% of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, because you think you're drinking a light beer and it's not that light really, is it's, it? It's <laughs> uh, definitely, <laughs> no, not really. So I'm pretty impressed with this beer. Uh, I think you did a great job on it. Once again, probably going to have another one after this. Um, but for that, everything that you want to get this kit is in the description. And next week, apparently, we're going to have an even stronger beer. So I'm kind of nervous about that. But uh, until next week. Cheers. Cheers.